we're back. I'm Dave Donaldson. Welcome back to Grip Tips. Today we're going to be taking a look at a particular product that I saw at Cinegear Atlanta. Uh, I went last year and uh, I saw something that kind of caught my eye that I think may may actually be changing the game in the industry. Uh, it's from a company called Portable Electric and the unit is called Volt Stack. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at the 2K and the 5K unit. Now I'm going to cover both units individually because it's there's kind of a difference in between the two, but first we're going to talk about the 2K unit. Now it's their smallest unit and it's not light, but it definitely can be lifted by two people as I'm demonstrating here, weighing in at 190 pounds. And not to boast, but you know, it didn't it didn't really feel like 190 pounds. You know, you know what I'm saying. Now we'll get to the front of the unit in just a second, but first let's show the back of the unit as that's where you're gonna start. You have two solar power ports on the right, and then you have a master battery button switch and a data port to run diagnostics with. Now the very first thing that you wanna do in order to power on the unit is you wanna tap the master battery button briefly for the button to illuminate a blue ring, and then close the flap that protects the button. After that, work your way to the front of the unit where when you flipped the switch in the back on, the battery life will display like bars on a cell phone. Now the first thing that you need to know about this unit is that the two plugs that are in the front on the right hand side uh, right below the two green indicator lights work exactly like a household outlet that's also kind of stating that like your house is up to date like I, I know that a lot of the older houses are only 15 amps like my dad's is like that As a matter of fact my house here is exactly like that where I've got kind of like a split of 15 amps and 20 amps uh, but this is basically running like a more up-to-date house where uh, these two outlets are basically splitting 20 amps. You know, don't go plug two 1Ks into the unit and then flip everything on and then plug something additionally into it because the breakers are going to trip. It's not a really a big deal. I mean, you haven't really damaged anything. It just means that you're going to have to remove that uh, and then flip the breakers back on. So, you know, don't be tripping. But you do have two receptacles available to divide power as you see fit. You also have a charging port. And I will say that I think it's impressive that this unit can charge in only two and a half hours. I think that's really, really impressive, but we'll, we'll talk about charging later. You also have two five volt USB charging stations to power the important things like, you know, your phone. But from here, you can press the on slash off button and then flip the breaker and the two green indicator lights will come on, letting you know that the outlets are now live. And that's it. That's like as super simple as it, as it gets. There's no gas to be added. You know, nothing that you would have to do if you're dealing with like a suitcase. It's just boom, here's, here's 20 amps of power. Uh, but to power off the unit, you basically want to follow those instructions in the exact reverse. Uh, first, you want to make sure that you flip the breakers off and then you also want to tap the on slash off button, then head to the back of the unit and turn the master battery switch off. So that's the 2K unit. Now let's move on to the 5K unit. Now, right off the bat, you'll notice that there's a 60 amp paddle hooked to it. That's for running a 40 amp distro, which we'll get to that in a second. But first, we're gonna talk about the front. Here we have two 20 amp receptacles, which means each receptacle has 20 amps available. But on the opposite side, we have two 15 amp charging outlets. Then we have two breaker switches on the right for when you're drawing power. And on the other side, we have two breaker switches for the charging side. Then there's also two five volt USB charging ports. Let's be honest, it's for your phone and your friend's phone or your iPad. Actually, I could probably see me, myself using this to probably maybe charge like a couple of the LED tubes that are out there, like uh, maybe like the Q5 LSs or uh, any of those, any of those things. I think that would probably work. I'd have to, I'd have to check the plug. This is from the Q5 LSs. Five volts, three amps. There you go. So yeah, you could probably take the USB plug and charge the portable uh, quasars you got. Now that's the front. So now on to the back. There's two battery switches, unlike the 2K unit. Then there's also these two data ports, which again is just for running diagnostics on the unit itself. And there's also two ports to plug in solar power. And again, something that we're just gonna have to address later. I'm trying to break this down for you. But with all of these ports, you just need to power up the volt stack the exact same way as the 2K unit by powering up the two master battery on slash off switches. And then in the front, the battery indicator will flash on. And this is probably something I should have mentioned with both of these units. Uh, whenever you go to power them on in the back, you kind of want to give it like a five count. Um, I think actually their website says like 10 seconds or something, but you want to give like the batteries, the cells that are actually inside of the volt stack, you want to give that some time to kind of cycle up. You're kind of getting the batteries warm. I guess this is the best way to kind of put that. After that, hit the on slash off switch, flip on the breakers and you're good to go. But this is also just kind of something to note if you're if you're relatively new with power i'm still learning distro so don't be embarrassed you'll notice that on the 2k unit and the 5k unit that they both have two plugs uh, the 2k unit again it's only 20 amps of power between those two plugs so 
two 1Ks. However, on the 5K unit, you have two plugs separating two 20 amp outlets. So it's, you basically, you have 40 amps of power available to you now. So let's just say, I don't know, let's just say you took like a, a cube tap and you plugged into both of those. Well, now you can actually run a, a few lights off of just one side and a few lights off of just one, one side. So basically like you could probably run four, four 1Ks, right? But no more in terms of paper amps, because again, you're gonna be tripping. But just kind of understand that like the 2K unit, two receptacles, only 20 amps going out. Uh, the 5K unit is two receptacles, 40 amps going out. Now let's talk about the 60 amp uh, paddle that's actually connected to it or, or zip tied to it. Uh, this is kind of a uh, makeshift system, but basically you're uh, running out 40 amps in through a 60 amp paddle. And this is something that Parker Shippey, a local 52 electric hand made, so. It won't really necessarily be available everywhere, but I'm pretty sure a more professional version could be sold somewhere. It probably is, um, again, I'm still learning power, uh, but uh, basically they made this, and what I really like about what they've done is they've actually attached one side uh, with a, another outlet attached to it, which is just like a dead outlet uh, for a safety uh, reason, because you wanna start this unit when it's completely off. You know, don't like power everything on and then plug these in. I think you might risk uh, giving yourself an arc as I, as I understand it. Um, so start with the unit completely off before you start trying to join two outlets together. Now after connecting both sides, you can then power up in the back and count to five again, just to make sure that the volt stack cycles up. And it's just the same process from before, hitting the on slash off button and then the breakers, and that will make the 60 amp pad alive. Super, super simple. And if you notice when I only flipped one of those breakers on, both of the indicator lights come on, it's totally normal. It, like those indicator lights are just telling you that electricity is being sensed by the volt stack. So don't have to be alarmed, but make sure that you do hit both breakers on. Uh, and also something to take note, note is that yes, it is a 60 amp paddle that is on the end of this and it's only pushing out 40 amps. Now that doesn't mean that you have 60 amps just because it says 60 amps, uh, but it's something to keep in mind when you're running distro as you only are gonna get 40 amps on the other side of whatever distro you've laid out. But again, this is something that like, I, I'm sure a more professional version is out there where it actually says 40, but just something to kind of take note of, even though I'm doing it here, I just want you to, to no notice that. Okay, so that's how to power up the unit and do a 40 amp distro system. Now let's talk about charging the unit. You'll first notice the two male receptacles, just plug in two stingers there, one and two and then head to the back of the unit and power on both master battery switches. Count to five for the volt stack to cycle up. Then hit the breakers on the left side above the charging ports and the yellow indicator lights will illuminate, letting you know that your battery is now charging. The battery indicator circle in the center top will let you know what the level of the battery is and you're good to go. Now, this next part I actually forgot to shoot, but um, I made a little bit of, of a mistake. Uh, Adam actually over at Lightbulb Grip pointed it out when I was shooting. Uh, as I went to go plug this in, I initially went to go plug it into the exact same outlet, which I wasn't thinking about, but Adam caught on and he was like, hey, you're, you're not plugging that into the same outlet to then plug into the volt stack, are you? And I said, yeah, and he goes, you know that doesn't work that way, right? And it took a, a minute and then I was kind of like, I'm dumb. See, the problem with that is, is that uh, the volt stack in itself can take 15 amps in, per outlet or you know the mail in. But basically, uh, just like your household, you have 20 amps in your family room, you've got 20 amps in your hallway, you've got 20 amps in your bathroom, uh, but you need to be plugging 15 amps per port uh, at a minimum in order to charge this in two and a half hours from two completely different sources. So basically, I would need to plug something into my family room and in my hallway or my garage, whatever has like a 20 amp uh, breaker into the volt stack in order to get that two and a half hour charge. Um, I wasn't really thinking about that, but on the other end of it, yes, make sure that you're plugging it in in two different, uh, completely different sources. Otherwise, you're just pulling in 20 amps with two cables, which just it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You're actually just wasting cable, I guess, uh, in time. But if you were actually just like, I don't know, let's say, I guess it kind of depends. Are you on set and you're breaking for lunch, you got a one hour lunch, uh, you can plug two different sources into this, get a little bit back that power that you've just used. And then also if you were traveling on a show and you're loading 
back into the hotel for the night or something. Uh, just like a lot of ACs out there, you could bring this inside, plug it in just with one stinger if you wanted to, and it will take a lot longer for it to charge that way, but it'll charge overnight for like five hours. It only needs like five hours to actually charge through one of those ports. But if you're using both, it takes two and a half hours. So I guess it depends. Do you have five hours to charge the entire battery from dead to full? Uh, if so, you can plug in one stinger, but if you need uh, power immediately, uh, you wanna make sure that you're plugging in from like, again, your garage in your hallway and connecting in so that you're getting two and a half hours later, a full battery. But charging actually doesn't just stop there. Can, and, and, and I know somebody's gonna ask this, can you use the unit and charge it at the exact same time? Yes, you're absolutely allowed to do that. And they also have one more thing that they added onto it, which I'm kind of a huge nerd over, uh, is you can actually charge this unit with a solar panel or a couple of solar panels. I, I'm honestly, I'm looking into solar energy for like when I buy my own house and maybe save a, a buck or two on just solar energy. Uh, but this is a nice way of getting green power with this. I mean, here you can actually see what I'm doing with the unit. It's very, very easy to hook up. All you gotta do is take the solar panels plug, plug it into the back of the volt stack, and then just find some sort of light source from the outside. Uh, here you can see that I have like a little bit of window light coming in and hitting the solar panel. And it's not even covering it fully, but this, even this amount of light is charging the volt stack. Um, you can also see that you can go outside and you could just set it up anywhere and run power that way. I mean, that's a really, really cool feature. Um, the one thing that I, I didn't know was that like, I, it's working as a trickle charge. So there's no real way to kind of know if it's charging from the solar panel, it just is. Uh, but as I was thinking about that, as the, the indicator on the front doesn't really tell you, they actually came out with a new indicator that they're going to be start. Uh, they're going to start putting on their newer units, uh, which is like a little digital display, and it'll tell you, you know, how much is coming in off of a solar panel, how much is coming in through like a grid, a grid line, grid power. So where would this uh, become a point where you actually need a unit like this? Uh, not only is it just like it, it's nice to be able to have on set so that you can just roll power straight to set and not worry about any noise and just start running your lights out of the system in itself. I, th I think that's really cool. Uh, you don't have to hook up a generator, run a crap load of cable or sticks, I should say. I'm still learning electric all the way into set in order to power your entire set. You could just you could just bring you could just bring the generator in. And I guess another situation would be like. Well, locations, maybe you're out in the forest or something like that, or the desert or whatever, where there's no like real power to tie into. So you'd have to get a generator or a couple of putt putts or whatever. But again, we're talking about noise where the sound guy is gonna be concerned, uh, but this thing makes absolutely no, no noise. So you can just haul it onto set. And lastly, in a situation like I had, and again, this goes back to that M&M uh, M &M shoot that I had. Uh, this is actually a picture of me on top of the Masonic temple on the 11th floor. Now, we kind of lucked out that day because we had roof access, so we were able to bring up a couple of putt-putt generators and just run our distro inside and all the way to set for that uh, particular scene. Um, but if, let's say we didn't have roof access, I mean, what would you do? This would be the solution for it because now you can just roll power again, straight to set, no cables all over the place. Um, and if you're, if you're charging at solar, I mean, this is like kind of a, kind of a really cool, like green system. So where can you rent this? Well, if you live in New York, Lightbulb Grip is a lighting rental house based out of Brooklyn, New York, and they're dedicated to the education and safety on all film sets. If you have any questions about what you've seen in today's episode, or maybe you're looking for a rental quote, you can feel free to reach out to them at www.lightbulbgrip.com. No, they're not, I mean, they're... They're helping out with this episode, but they're not sponsoring the episode. I shot all of my B-roll over at Lightbulb Grip. I went there uh, a couple of weeks ago because uh, I wanted to actually see their facility for the first time. I mean, I know Adam really well just talking to him on the phone and stuff, but that's actually, that's kind of a hint toward the next episode. Uh, but back to the Volt Stacks, if you guys are actually trying to purchase it, let's say you're exactly like Adam's company, Lightbulb Grip, and you rent out all the time. Um, I think almost all houses should have a couple of these units and maybe just just a few more to add to your inventory. So if you're looking to actually purchase them for your business, uh, 
Portable Electric is actually a company located in Canada, but they have an exclusive deal uh, worked out with a company called Shattered Prism, which is again, also located in New York. So if you're actually looking for uh, to purchase the unit I'll ha or, or rent, I'll leave links in the description below. Also, if you're in different states other than New York, uh, you, they do have multiple locations in the U.S. where this is actually already available to rent. So um, again, links in the description. We'll have Portable Electric's website, Lightbulb Grip's website, and we'll have Shattered Prism's website uh, in the description below. But sadly, that is all that I have for you guys today. If you liked today's episode, please let me know in the comment section below. You could also follow me on Twitter right here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, buy a t-shirt, and we'll see you on the next one.